Hi, I'm Jake. I'm the video director at Harborfront Center, and this is a reference for how I approach video production in very generic terms. I'm going to try and get you started no matter what device you have by just imparting like how I approach putting a video together. So here's a step-by-step -step guide of the basics of video production. Okay, number one, look at your gear. Open your camera app on whatever device you've got. If it's a MacBook, then you've got Photo Booth, I think it is. If it's an iPhone, it's just a camera. Samsung have their own camera app. Whatever device you have, it's a good practice to just Google whatever device you've got. So say you have like an S21 or an iPhone 11, whatever you've got, Google that plus how to record video. Chances are someone has made a specific tutorial for your device and is advertising an app that will solve all of your problems. My recommendations are the stock camera app in whatever mobile device you have or OBS, and that works on both Mac and Windows, laptops, PCs, whatever. It's a great platform. You can find lots of great tutorials on how to record video with OBS. Next step, scout locations. Video production is all about what elements of the production you can control. So you want to be able to control your sound, your light, your image, your space, and your internet connection in this age. Find a quiet room where you can control the level of noise from the outside and the inside. Keep an eye out for things like refrigerators or air conditioning units or coffee machines, doorbells, traffic outside dogs, all of these things can make a lot of noise and distract you. Easy ways to control for ambient noise are to use headphones that have a microphone in them. Headphones will also negate any feedback that you're going to get in a panel if you've got other people talking through the same device that you're recording to. A stable internet connection is crucial. Uh, always get wired internet if you have it available. If you're on wireless, turn off other devices so that you're not competing for bandwidth with your device. Try and pick a room where you have lots of different options for your lighting. You want light to be able to come from a variety of different directions and ideally a variety of different sources so that you can mix and match your colors and your directions to maximize your image, to maximize, to make your image pretty. Pick a spot where your device, whether it's a phone or a tablet or a laptop, can sit flat and stable. If your camera is rocking, then it's going to be distracting for your viewers. Make sure your device has stable power. If you're running off of battery, there's a good chance that it's going to die halfway through your production. Make sure the area where you're recording is comfortable for your subject. If it's you, pick a spot where you can sit comfortably for the four hours or whatever time is going to be required for this full production. And lastly, pick a spot where your camera has a few options. Space is your friend here, but a lot can go into your composition. So we'll deal with that when we're talking about building the frame. Next step is the setup. Get your device powered, check your internet, reset your internet, reset your device, close all the other apps that are running on the device that you're recording from, and turn off the notifications to your device. Now we're ready for camera placement. So I've got my camera kind of right in front of my script. Uh, it's a good idea to have your script or whatever reference material as close to the lens as possible so that while you're delivering, your sight line stays steady. If your eyes are moving from the lens to your script to things around the room, then the audience is gonna be distracted by your gaze constantly shifting. So look around your room to identify places where your subject can be separated out from the background. You want your background to be distinct from your subject, nothing popping out of the top of your subject's head or emanating from their body. So I'm looking at this frame and I'm seeing these lines of the roof and the wall coming down are leading the viewer's eye to me. There's a good amount of negative space up here. There's some stuff in the background here, but this texture, this texture isn't really contiguous with what I'm wearing. So I think that this pops out really well. Also the white, lots of different colors to deal with. Um, this rack behind me is a bit of a problem, especially that bright orange vest. I would probably move that. Um, these objects on the shelf, they're not too distracting, but they're worth 
looking at, right? Just spend some time looking at your frame and identifying all of the problem areas that you might run into. This is a good opportunity to make sure your camera is level. Use perspective lines like ceilings, floors, and walls to have a natural vanishing point in your frame. Okay, next up, you wanna light the stage. Not too bright, not too dark. You'll wanna use light and shadow to distinguish your subject from the background. A good rule of thumb is to have a different light for your subject's face, a different light from your subject's back, and a different light for the background. Okay, now that we're all set up, it's time to inspect the frame. So let's take a look at our camera's height and angle. You want it not too close, not too far, not too high, and not too low. Positioning your camera at slightly below eye level, at a medium close-up like this, where you can see the subject's head, shoulders, and maybe all the way to their elbows is a good medium-ish close-up. If your subject talks with their hands, then it's a good idea to let your frame include the hands. If your subject fidgets, it's a good idea to crop the hands out so that the audience isn't distracted by whatever the subject's hands are doing. Sight lines. If possible, maintaining eye contact with your lens is crucial. I'm not looking directly at my lens because I'm watching how I'm performing to try and make sure that I stay within my frame. If I was participating in a Q&A, I would also be looking at this spot in my phone. It's close enough to the lens that this isn't particularly distracting. If I was constantly looking from my reference spot on my monitor to the lens and then to a separate script, then the audience is gonna get distracted by my gaze constantly shifting. So try and make sure that any reference material you have, whether it's prompts or scripts or uh, other guests in the Q&A, if you're recording one, are as close to the lens as possible and that they stay in the same place. Teleprompters work by having the reference material be in front of the lens of your camera. This is a good time to inspect the lighting in your frame. So I'm seeing here that there's natural light coming in from the window and that's a nice kind of like diffused white that's separating me here. I've got a conventional lamp back there that's giving me just a little bit of an edge here that's separating me from the background. And I've got a conventional lamp that is shining down towards my face. And you can see the little like sparkle in my eye. The eye sparkle comes from light bouncing off of your eye into the lens. That Rembrandt lighting of sort of semi-profile and above is a great option for making your subject pop with lighting. Just quickly, because they're so popular right now, ring lights give you a nice even lighting for your entire face. Here's one that I built out of some spare LED strip. You can see the effect that it gives you, right? It's, uh, it's meant to be mounted kind of in front of your lens to light the entire ring of your face. Ring lights are great, they're easy, and you can find lots of options to stably mount them to the outside of your phone. But really the best way to get lighting that looks great is to spend the time to move your light source around, play with it, find something that makes you really stand out from your background. The last part of inspecting your frame is to do a microphone check. Uh, I'm using headphones here. Headphones are a great way to mitigate any feedback that you're gonna get and make sure that your microphone is as close to your sound subject as possible. AirPods work great. Bluetooth earbuds allow for more freedom and a lower profile than a wired headphone connection. But while I was doing my first tests, I realized that my phone's camera doesn't hear my wireless Bluetooth headphones. So I'm using these ones to make sure that my mic stays close to my mouth. It's all part of playing with your gear and finding out what functionality it has. So once you've got everything set up, you've inspected your frame and you feel really good about it, do a test record of your entire presentation. Do a listen of your microphone. If you're finding that the sound is really echoey, move your microphone closer. If the sound is distorting, take your microphone a little bit further away or turn the input volume down on it. Do an audit of your frame. And if something doesn't look right, you can move it. Do another test record until you feel confident in the image that you're producing. And get feedback. If you're looking at your frame and you're finding something that really doesn't work for you, show it to somebody else and see if they have any insight. By the time you've done a test recording, chances are you're gonna know specifically what you need help with. Google is your friend. Okay, that should be everything. So just to recap, step one is look at your gear. Open your camera app and play around with the menus. This can be fun. Step two, scout locations. Look for a place where you can control the internet, the audio, the lighting, the camera angles, and your comfort levels. Walk around with your device and see what backgrounds and textures you like in your environment. Step three is the setup. Lock everything down, make it secure, and make your stage look nice. Four. 
Inspect your frame. Do an audit of the headroom, the handroom, and the overall negative space in your image. Remember, you can use texture, color, lighting, depth of field, and distance between your subject and your background to distinguish your subject from the background. Take a look at your sight lines and adjust your camera's height and angle to make the relationship between your subject and the camera feel natural to you, the viewer. Last is record a test. The best way to do this is to do it over and over and practice it until you get better at it. Do this as many times as you can until you get a feel for how it's done and what works for you and doesn't work. You can use Google to answer specific questions that you have and ask us for feedback if you feel like you get stuck. Okay, that's everything. Thanks and good luck.